Now that we have defined a function, the next thing for us to do is to figure out how to use that function. So let's go back and look at this example and just review what we've done so far. We wanted to compute a, or we wanted to create a function that would compute the length of the diagonal of a rectangle that had some width and some height. And so in order to do that, what we decided was that we would create a function that could take the width and the height of any rectangle and it would return the computed diagonal length. Syntactically, remember how we did this was we said def, which is the beginning of a function definition, and then we had to supply the name. And we chose the name compute diagonal because it makes sense. That's what this function will do. You can pick any identifier that you wish, but it makes sense to use something that has meaning related to the function's job. And then in parentheses, we have a list of what are called the parameters. These parameters represent the things or the pieces of information that the function will need to do its work. So in this case, after the parentheses, we have a variable sum h, comma, and then a variable sum w, and then a closed parenthesis. So what that means is that this function will need two pieces of information to do its work. The first piece of information we are assuming will be the height of the rectangle, and the second will be the width of the rectangle. Now again, we can name these anything we want, but the names that we choose will be the variables then that will receive those pieces of information, and then in the body of the function, those are the names that we will use to access those data objects. And then the definition, uh, the initial name uh, signature finishes with a colon. What follows the colon then is this body or block of statements that will be done in sequence. Remember that a function is a name for a sequence or a block of statements. And so in this case all we're doing is writing an algorithm in a sense to do the typical relationship a squared plus b squared equals c squared where the diagonal is the long side of the triangle and a and b are the two short sides so in our case the width squared plus the height squared will equal the diagonal squared so the first step was to compute that sum of squares and we just said let's take the height and square it and let's take the width and square it and then we'll add those together notice we used sum h and sum w because those are the names of the parameters that we chose. The next step is to compute the actual diagonal and to do that we use the square root function from the math library that required that we import math and then it's simply math.square root and we want to take the square root of that sum of squares. And then the final step for this function was to simply return the value of the data object that the diagonal variable refers to. And so when this function is used we'll have to supply two pieces of information and we'll expect to get one piece of information back. Now we've saved this function, we called it diagonal.py, and we're now ready to use the function. So if I were to just go ahead and try to run this function just the way that it is, we notice that in the Python shell nothing happens. Now it turns out that something did happen. The function was actually defined. So if I type in here compute diagonal just as an identifier and I evaluate that identifier then it tells me that that is the name of a function but the problem is is that I actually wanted the function to do something I wanted it to compute and return that diagonal length so in order to do that what I need to include is the use or what's called the invocation of that function and to invoke a function we just have to supply basically two things the first is the name of the function itself and then in parentheses the data values that will represent the actual information that we want the function to use so remember that there were two parameters the first was the height and the second was the width so I have to supply the actual height so let's say that this rectangle has a height of three and the actual width let's say it has a width of four and so that becomes then our invocation of the function I want to use the compute diagonal function and I want to pass it the values 3 and 4. 3 will be received by the height sum h, 4 will be received by the variable sum width. The calculation will be done and then the return will occur. Now again if I save this and then try to run what I'll notice is that nothing appeared. 
Now the function did in fact execute, but the problem is, is that this function returns something. It returns the result of calculating that diagonal. Unfortunately, I didn't use that return value. I simply called the function and let the return value come back, but never get used. And so what we would need to do is perhaps save that value somehow. So I could create an assignment statement. I could say the answer will be a reference to the value that's returned by calling the compute diagonal function. So now, when I evaluate the right-hand side of this assignment statement, I receive back the value of the diagonal, and now answer will be a reference to that data object. Again, if I save this and try to run it, what we'll notice is that I still don't get any result. Why? Because even though I saved the value, I never displayed the value. And so the final thing we might want to do here is simply print out the value of that answer. And now, when I save that newest version and run, we should see that the value of the diagonal is in fact 5. Now, we wouldn't have had to place the invocation as part of an assignment statement. We could have gone ahead and simply printed the result of calling the compute diagonal function directly. Let's compute the diagonal of a rectangle that's got a side of 5 and a side of 7. So now we're directly going to print the result that gets returned by compute diagonal. So once again, if I save this and then run, we can see that for my first rectangle, the diagonal is 5, and my second rectangle, the diagonal now is 8.6023 and so on. What this also shows, by the way, is that we can use this function over and over again. I can use the function to compute the diagonals of different rectangles by simply supplying different information in the parameters. So in this case I supplied 3 and 4, in this case I supplied 5 and 7. Either way, the height and width simply receive those actual values. So functions are a very powerful technique for writing general pieces of programming code, general types of calculation or general types of processing and then being able to invoke those functions, passing specific information to make the general function do a particular thing.